Welcome back to From the Heart with me, Dawn Lister. I found it hard to find the right words for the introduction to season five. I hope for you the last few months have been kind. We all need a bit of kindness in our lives right now, don't we? The world to me seems to be in a state of extreme distress. We witness violence, hate and polarisation on the increase in the world around us. In my country, in the UK, our government and the opposing parties have never in my memory felt so lost and rudderless. In fact, people in my area, which is a reasonably wealthy and comfortable area, are increasingly turning to food banks just to survive. The cost of living is so high, even people's basic needs are not being met. There's a huge amount to feel sad and overwhelmed about, and certainly in the clinic where I work, we are witnessing an increase in people's sense of overwhelm and hopelessness. The news is flooded with images of sadness and distress. And in living memory, have we ever witnessed so much cruelty and hate? In conversation with both friends and colleagues, we have noted a real sense of hopelessness. The problems seem so huge that what can we do to change things? And how can we help? Some have become numb to the suffering of others, many turning the other way because it's just too painful to look, knowing truthfully how little impact we have. So for this reason, I found it really hard to nail down a topic to explore this season because everything just seemed too trite. I don't buy into the belief we can just think ourselves free from suffering that we are able to simply just send compassion or think happy thoughts and the world will suddenly be a better place. I'm also a realist. Suffering is sadly the nature of our existence. We all will suffer in one way or another. The world can be a very unkind place. And the more we're exposed to the cruelty of human beings that they impose on each other and our planet, the more we will suffer. So I found myself beginning to feel sad, angry and disillusioned with what feels like ignorance and frankly, the stupidity of the decision makers. I came to the conclusion that whilst I don't have the power to stop wars or end global warming, change the industries which are polluting the planet, I do have some power and a voice. We all do. None of us are completely powerless. We can make choices about where we spend our money, how much time we devote to feeding the monster of capitalism and how much time we spend taking care of ourselves and our loved ones because really that has such a powerful effect, not just on us, but the people around us and then the people around them and on and on and on. So at the beginning of this year, I took a bit of time out to really take care of myself and to have a good think in the light of the darkness that felt so heavy around me, around the world. The last few years brought so much change and so many challenges. I decided to use some time to really consider how I could ensure I was going to be able to keep my heart open and not turn away from the suffering I was witnessing around me. I took time to really consider what I needed to do to help me find joy and peace. Not to stop feeling angry, because frankly, we've got lots of reasons to be angry. And anger can be a way to help us create change. I acknowledge that I'm angry about the unnecessary suffering we see due to greed in the world. I'm angry that a so-called civilised world is still solving conflict with violence. I'm angry that we're made to work so very hard for such long hours just to have our basic needs met. And frankly, sometimes not even that. The more I reflected, the more I realised that my anger does have a place and a right to be there and that I'm entirely within my right to feel it. But I don't want to be stuck there. It's not a place to exist. Anger needs to be a stop on the way to change. I used this anger that I'm feeling to dig deep and work out what it was I needed to do to feel better in myself, to feel reconnected to my community and my home, the planet. For me, the earth and nature has always acted as a soother and a healer. 
So I turned to the earth for some wisdom. She never takes more than she needs. Forests communicate with each other, warning the trees around them when there's danger. Seasons don't cling, but freely, freely move from one to the next. Plants grow together, helping to protect other plants around them. Nothing in nature takes more than it needs. And like clockwork, the sun and moon rise and set. So I realized that the earth was holding the answer I sought. There's no hate in Mother Earth, no grasping or greed, just pure collaboration and beauty. So I decided that for season five, I'm going to so focus on the earth and our connection to her. She's the perfect example. How can we learn from her? How can she inspire us to greater things? So I've sought out practitioners and commentators who are also interested in the connection that we have to the earth, our mother, our home, and our healer. And I hope, like me, you will be inspired and awed by the conversations that I have been privileged to have. I look forward to sharing them with you.